I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome and thank you for participating in the candidate forum for the vacancy on the Centerville Town Council, which is sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Queen Anne's County. My name is Patricia Jameson, and I'm the current president of the League of Women Voters of Queen Anne County, and the two candidates participating in the forum are Mr. George Siegler and Mr. Josh Schantz. Gentlemen, thank you for your participation. Thank you for having us. Okay. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization whose membership is open to all persons at least 16 years of age. Originally, only women could participate in the League of Women Voters. But in 1973, the charter was modified to include men. We have both male and female members. In fact, some of them are here. Some of the male members are here. And we encourage both men and women to join the League. Our mission is to encourage participation of voters in the democratic process. We do this through various efforts, including voter registration. In fact, we have three tomorrow. To, uh, at each of the high schools, we're going to be doing voter registration, and also we're going to be doing it over at the uh, Chesapeake College. Uh, we do this through other things, such as holding, for holding forums, such as the one we have here today, and developing the voter's guide. How many of you get the voter's guide in, in your local papers? And I have heard that people take it with them when they go to vote. <laughs> it, it contains a lot of really good information about the elections and the candidates. And have you ever gone to Vote 411? Vote 411, the voter's guide is on Vote 411. It's now online. And you can also go to for, Vote 411. And by the way, there are cards out there on the table, 411 cards. You can go there, and you can also check on your registration. You can change it if you want to change your party affiliation. You, know, you, can, you can do that. So take advantage of Vote 411, OK? And I want to tell you that 2020 is the 100th anniversary of the founding of the League of Women Voters. It was founded on February 14th, 1920, just six months before the 19th Amendment was signed. So 100 years ago, we women didn't have the right to vote. Terrible, right? <laughs> so we, want, we, encourage, we encourage people to join us and, and work with us. It was a 72-year struggle by women before the 19th Amendment gave them the right to vote. In fact, one of our members was telling us that she had an aunt who ended up in jail during the time that the suffragettes were trying to get the, the right to vote. So the founders believed that a nonpartisan league could provide education to the public to ensure the success of democracy. And that's so important, because we're a young democracy. Our league, which has been active since 2004, supports the belief that democracy works best when voters make informed decisions and forums such as the one we have this tonight are one way to do that. So thank you again for being here and participating with us. And at this time, it gives me great pleasure to turn things over to Mrs. Barbara Sharkey, who is our league's former president. Thanks. Okay, Barbara. Barbara's gonna moderate the forum tonight for us. I'm gonna try. Thank you, Pat. Okay. Is this mic working? You can hear me? <clears throat> I just want to remind you again that this form is being videotaped and also live streamed by Queen Anne's County TV to the Queen Anne's County TV Facebook page. Um, I want to ask you to please silence your phones and any other devices that you have that might ring or bing or whistle or anything during the forum. And um, again, tonight the forum is for the um, Centerville Town Council, we have two candidates running, Mr. Josh Schantz and Mr. George Sigler. Neither is an incumbent. And so I'm going to go over the format for tonight's forum. Um, it's outlined in the program. The first part is an introduction by each one of the candidates. They will each be given two minutes to speak about themselves. The second part is um, candidates will answer questions that were given beforehand. 
These are questions based on suggestions that the candidates gave us. We asked them to suggest um, some areas that they would like to be spoken about tonight. And, um, and so we came up with five questions, and those are printed in your program on the, on the left-hand side. Um, the candidates will have three minutes to each to answer each one of the questions. The floor will then be open to questions from the audience. The, the person asking the question will have 45 seconds to ask the question, and the question must be asked of both candidates. You can direct your question to one if that's who you want to direct it to, but both will have a chance to answer it, and each candidate will be given two minutes to respond to each question. And then we're going to conclude with closing remarks from each candidate, which again will be two minutes each. We anticipate the forum will conclude by 8.30. Um, timers are sitting in the front row, Liz Hammond and Carolyn Mooreshead. Carolyn, and could you hold up your, so you can see, one is a 15 second warning and one is a stop. So even if you're up here asking a question, really you only have 45 seconds and they will, they will hold up the, your a reminder. <laughs> and I ask, could you please hold your applause until the very end? Um, that way we'll save time rather than having applause after every question. Okay, so let's get on with it now. Um, the candidates have drawn straws um, to see who goes first, and uh, Mr. Siegler won, number one. Uh, so he is going to start by introducing himself, and then uh, Mr. Schantz will introduce himself. Mr. Siegler? Thank you. I want to thank everybody for caring about Centerville as much as I do. And by taking time out of your very busy week to show up for this, it's nice to see a full audience. And the one thing I noticed different this time than the last time I sat in front of one of these is the demographics have changed. There are a lot of young folks here, and there may be hope for us yet. When my wife Deb and I moved to Centerville in 1992, let me just, before I do that, I want to read real quick. Some of you may know me, some of you may not. My background is I'm a retired United States Marine. I was a business development manager with the Procter & Gamble Company, town of Centerville member, president, Centerville Town Council, past commander of the Jeff Davis Post 18 American Legion, Centerville, past commandant, Jason David Milio Detachment Marine Corps League, member, chairperson, Centerville Planning and Zoning, member chairman, Queen Anne's Council of Government, and Citizen of the Year 2017 for the Queen Anne's County Rotary Club. My son, Deb was eight months pregnant when we moved here. My son was born here. He is currently following in my footsteps to be a career Marine. He will be the sixth generation of our family to do that, going back to 1842. Service to country. My daughter is in the second year of the nursing program at Chesapeake College. College, she wants to be a traveling nurse, again, serving her fellows. When we first moved here, there were approximately 1,800 residents in Centerville in 1992. Centerville today is fast approaching 1,800 households and almost 5,000 full-time residents. During work hours, the town population doubles to 10,000. When I served before, I would meet weekly with every member of the staff of the town council. Thank you. Mr. Schantz? I don't know how to stop this. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, to touch on what George said, thank you guys so much for being here. It's very important that people come out and vote. Uh, a lot of people have opinions in the world of the digital age. Everybody can go on the internet and say whatever they want. They can complain about things that they want, but unless you show up and actually place a vote, or you show up and you campaign, or you show up in general, nothing's gonna change. So thank you guys for being here. Thanks to George for your service to the country. Thank you very much. Uh, your family as well for following in your footsteps. I'm sure everybody here can appreciate that. Um, my family's the same, I did not serve. I come from uh, 
military family as well, but I, I went to college instead of going to the military. I didn't want to get yelled at at five o'clock in the morning. It wasn't really my thing. Um, you'll see tonight I don't have a lot of fancy speeches. I'm a businessman, young entrepreneur. Um, I'm not a politician. Um, I believe in doing what's right. I follow my heart, I speak my mind, and I stand up for the little guy. I've been a bully smasher since I was 17 years old. I'm gonna continue to do it. Um, I'm not a mudslinger. I'm all about positivity. I'm all about gravity. I'm not about competition. I want everyone to succeed. I want everyone here to leave with smiles on their faces. I want everyone here to leave with a sense of hope. Um, the last couple years have been tough in Centerville, the road program. We've spent a lot of money. There's a lot of things going on. It's up to us to make the change. And when I say us, I mean everybody in this room. It's not George or I. You're electing a team leader tonight. You're not electing someone that's going to just go and snap their fingers and things are going to change. It's not how this works. So as you hold us accountable, we have to hold you accountable as well. So thank you for showing up. I appreciate everyone for being here, no matter what side of the fence you're on. And um, together is the only way that we're going to make this thing change. OK, we'll move on to the prepared questions. And the first, um, Mr. Shantz goes first because he was second before. The first question is, do you believe that our business district is healthy and successful? If not, what would you do to stimulate business growth in Centerville? How would you pay for it? Mr. Schultz. Well, I have to say, being a small business owner here myself, that the obvious answer is, is no, it's not where we want it to be. Um, to say that there's a ton of potential, obviously. Um, the roads, again, are a huge deterrent for people. I've seen businesses close. I've seen people drive around town to avoid the traffic. I've seen people make every effort possible not to sit through the mess that's going on downtown right now. Um, so that affects everyone. It affects your daily commute. Um, it affects it, your, your, your life from morning, noon to night, no matter what time you travel. But most of all, it does affect our small business. I see multiple small business owners in here right now on both sides of this aisle, and all of them have been affected directly. Either their street was shut down completely or they were diverted around them. Um, my company has invested hundreds of thousands of dollars into this town. We're opening our second restaurant coming up in November. We're trying to create jobs. We're trying to create the biggest need as you go into town hall says, what do the people of Centerville want? More restaurants, okay? So what can I do to do my part? Build a couple of restaurants, create some jobs, create some gravity, which is what I touched on earlier. Um, being inclusive is the only way that, that we're gonna be able to, to get this thing moving forward again. Getting small business owners involved with the council directly is, is a huge asset. We have a ton of existing ass assets. QAC TV is here tonight, that's one of them. Like I said, I see a lot of business owners in the crowd right now. That's, that's the only way you're gonna be able to move forward is to get them involved. Um, the other issues I see that we face are there's things like, you know, Lawyers Row and government buildings take up the prime real estate in town. There's so much more we could do with that beautiful square. This town is historic. We should be branding it as historic. We should be bringing business in based on the fact that we are a gorgeous historic town. Um, Drink Maryland's a great event that we throw. We can expand on that. Um, as far as paying for it, it, it doesn't cost anything to have a meeting with local business owners that want to make a difference. It doesn't cost anything to sit in a room and throw around ideas. It doesn't cost anything to get people to want to be excited and involved about moving the town forward. So as far as paying for people to get excited and paying for passion, that's not something you can pay for. Either you have it or you don't. And you either elect people who have it or you don't. And like I said, you're, you're sitting here about to, uh, you know, you're talking to team leaders. Um, so the other problem that we have is it's difficult to get started. There's a lot of roadblocks. There's a lot of um, information that's not presented right up front that I think we can do a much better job and say, here's the packet, here's all of the information. Let's have a meeting, let's sit down, let's talk about it, let's figure out how you can be successful and let's get other business owners that are local that are successful involved so we can pave the way for other people to come in and uh, let's make it a little bit easier instead of a little bit harder. Mr. Siegler, Thank three you. minutes. Do I believe that our business district is healthy and successful? Yes and no. We have a downtown that's pretty much blocked into government services. A couple of restaurants scattered in our downtown. Our growth centers go out 304, 305, and they will continue to, to grow that way. The way that you would pay for it is a couple of different things you could look at. Adjust the zoning codes to reduce business costs, help facilitate walkable business districts, 
We've got a new farm that just came on the market. Some of that is, is zoned for commercial. Those can all be in a big major master plan as we look at our next planning and zoning. We simplify the local regulations for starting a new business. I did that my first year on the council. We put together a letter that said, if you walk in the door, this is what you have to do. So that's in place. Create a small business guide on the town's website, listing the local businesses, their hours of operation, what <laughs> services they offer. And I think with our Centerville Economic De Development Authority, working hand in hand with Main Street, we can make this a much better place to grow businesses and more importantly, to keep businesses. Thank you very much. The second prepared question is, going forward, are there any important infrastructure projects that are necessary to improve the town? What are they and how would you pay for them? Mr. Siegler, you're first. I think the first thing we need to do is take a deep breath. We're just finishing one of the longest and hardest projects that we've ever come across. But in the 10 years, we have been under construction for 10 years. We have redone streets, and I wrote them down so I could remember all of them. Chesterfield Avenue, Little Kidwell, Water Street, Broadway, Hope Road, Kidwell, Railroad Avenue, Pennsylvania Avenue, Brown Street, Commerce and Liberty, and currently Happy Lady Lane. Thankfully, we now have completed all the major connector and arterial roads. While infrastructure replacement is important, we need to pause on road work for a while. We need to put some money back in the bank. We need to tighten our belts to make sure that when we take on our next project, we're positioned to do that. That being said, the three most important long-term infrastructure projects include an additional water tower on the town-owned property across from the high school. The one-acre property was donated to the town in 2010 as part of the county annexation and will provide important redundancy and capacity for our water system. We also need to look at the expansion of our wastewater treatment facility and a larger spray field. When we built the sewer and water plant, thank God those that came before us overbuilt it for redundancy and expansion, but it needs to be tweaked. And somewhere down the road, we're going to need to do that if we want to continue our sustained growth. The spray field, I had it in the budget to acquire another spray irrigation farm so we don't have to spend the money expanding our spray lagoon during the period of the year when we can't spray the fields. So those are also long-term, long-range projects. And as such can be built as development needs occur. The onus would be on any future development or annexation to pay for them. Thank you very much. Mr. Schantz. Three minutes. I actually agree with George on, uh, on most of that. Um, this road project has really crippled the town. There's no other way to say it. It was mishandled from the beginning. We've overspent $4 million. All of us in this room have been put in a place where we had to vote on using emergency money just to complete the project. I'm not exactly fond of going down that road again. Um, the biggest thing you can take out of that project is what not to do next time. Um, I, I just sit back and, and look at, at, the, at the timeline and the money and you just kind of have to say, well, it's over, it's spent, there's nothing we can do about it. So I agree with you, George. I think we stop and take a deep breath. I think that we need to focus on what we have. You have a struggling business district, as I just discussed. We need to put time and effort into what we already have. We need to use our existing assets. Um, there, there's no sense in moving forward when what you're already doing is struggling. So I, I don't really see another huge infrastructure project in the very near future. Now, what does that look? For, you know, what does that look like? You know, how do we, how do we stop and take a deep breath? And it's taking all the people in this room no matter what your capacity is, and gathering thoughts and ideas and figure out how to move forward. So no good company moves forward without listening to the people who work for it. No good business moves forward without the people and input. And no good town can move forward without people and input. So now is the time to take stock of what we have. Let's figure out where we want to go. And, you know, 
let's budget accordingly. But honestly, um, I agree with George. There's, I don't see anything in the near future. Our, our, our uh, assets are too, they're too depleted. Thank you. The next question is, what do you believe is the role of small business owners in the future growth of the town? What are ways the town council can support their efforts? Mr. Schantz? Well, I'm sensing a pattern with the questions. Um, it all kind of goes back to the local business owners again. Um, but it's on the town to involve them, right? So transparency, which we'll talk about again later in, in, in other questions. Um, but you need to find out what's working right, and we need to get those minds together to figure out how to continue to do things right, how to build on what's already going on. So um, what's working? Which businesses are being the most successful? Which ones are being the most community driven? Which ones are involving the most people? Which ones are giving back? Which ones are expanding and growing? That's the model we need to follow. And if you keep making the same mistake over and over again, you know, definition is insanity. So we don't want to do that. Um, but building gravity, which I touched on earlier, there's, there's, there's no such thing for me as, as competition. So when we, we opened our, our latest stores on the corner of Pennsylvania and water, you know, Mama Mia's is right across the street from us. And we thought, great, maybe we can help them too. You know, let's build gravity, not competition. So the more that we can bring into the town, the better it's going to be for everybody. Uh, but you have to tap those minds. You have to put together, call it a commission, call it a think tank, call it whatever it is, but it's on the town to reach out because the trust is not in their favor right now. After all this other stuff, it's, it's on them and it will be on one of us to reach out and say, hey, we want to do right, we want to move forward, but we want you to know that we're on your side and they need to form a team to be able to put those thoughts and, 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 and put them together and, and get them in action because we're the ones that are here doing it. Speaking as a small business owner in town, I'm willing to do whatever I can do to help move the town forward. We all live and work here. It does me no good to just sit idle, which is why I'm here in the first place. I don't want it to happen any more than you do. So how do we get better? We have to get the minds that are moving forward together, put together a plan, and involve the town with the people who live here. Thank you. Mr. Siegler? Thank you. I believe that both small and large businesses, owners are critical to the continued growth of any community. We have every day going north and south on 213, over 17,000 cars. On Highway 301, just recently with the bypass built in north of us, it's an additional 30,000 vehicles going north and south on the outskirts of our community. We need to be able to reach out and capture those folks to come to this town. And to do that, we have to have a viable, growing business district. And that district is not just going to be down, downtown, like I said before. It's got to grow out towards the highways. And I, it was probably four years ago, five years ago, when I saw a plan for a development at the corner of 304 and 301. And I said, yeah, that's, that'd be great. How are we going to get that here? How are we going to keep it here? How are we going to make sure that it thrives here? We, I have been here a long time. I've seen businesses come and businesses go. We need to be able to attract the businesses that are going to grow with us. And we're starting to make that turn on growth within the community can, to keep and maintain that growth by the people coming here, shopping here. I started earlier to tell you that that every day, Monday through Friday, we have over 10,000 people come into our community to go to school, to teach at school, to work in the government buildings here, to work in all the over 200 businesses that we currently have here. We just need to make sure that we're making those decisions moving forward. Four years ago, we formed the Centerville Economic Development Authority to just start doing that. And they are moving along slower than me because I have no patience. And I want it now. But Main Street Manager, Carol D'Alextino is our Main Street Manager. She puts, puts out a circular every quarter that goes to everyone in the 21617 zip code to grow the business in the town. We need to get the businesses here that want to stay here and are profitable here. And I think one of the last things we could potentially do as a town to do that is making the required processes transparent. Thank you. The next question changes it a little bit. Um, 
its transparency or the lack of it between town government and the people is an issue you both mentioned. How would you create more transparency? And as an elected official, what would you do to strengthen the bond between town government and the town people? And Mr. Sigler, you're first. First, we need to upgrade our website. We need to have it modernized, simplified, and all public documents should be available, budget, minutes, agendas, etc. The town has budgeted through economic development line item upgrades to the website. For no extra cost, the upgrades can be done. We just need a staff member to manage it. They can also come from the economic development budget. In this era, a comprehensive and easy website is paramount to economic development. Second, we need to send out more communications via our utility bills. While we only get them one per quarter, important notices, town events, and other communications can be sent to every rate payer. The only cost of this is the extra piece of paper to print it on. There is no additional co postage cost. We also have a great communication device in Centerville Main Streets quarterly, which I spoke on earlier. It goes to everybody in 21617. In addition, I make myself available every day to meet with citizens and address their concerns. I am a no-nonsense Marine, and I do not put up with, nor will I put up with a government that is not transparent to its citizens. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Shantz. So I, I, as, as you mentioned earlier, this is something that was important to both of us um, that we obviously both put on the list for tonight. So again, we go back to current assets. Tonight, this is being streamed live by QAC TV. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be able to do that for town meetings as well. Um, I completely agree with you that everything should be updated on the website, should all be available to look at whenever you want. Uh, shouldn't have to file a Freedom of Information Act uh, paper just to, you know, get information that I need that's, that should be public knowledge in the first place. Um, but what is transparency? You know, it means different things to different people. For me, it, in this position, your, my job is to give you all of the information. My job is to communicate what the town is doing. There, there, there should be no questions about that. You shouldn't have to guess or wonder or struggle to get answers. There's no, there's no time that you should have to wonder. Um, like George, I, I'm available all the time. Transparency is huge for me. Go into any one of my businesses and you'll see that they're built wide open. You can see every, sing every single thing that I do, no matter what time of day it is, no matter how busy, how slow, you see everything for a reason. I want you to be involved. I want you to see what I'm doing. I want you to see that it's clean. I want you to see that we're working hard. I want you to see all that stuff because I put my heart and soul into it. Um, and, and it's just, it's important. The, the trust is gone. It's that simple. So how do you rebuild that trust? Transparency and honesty are the only two answers. Whether it's a relationship in your personal life or the relationship from the people of the town and the town that runs it, that's, it's the only answer. You have to be wide open. Thank you. So we're at the last prepared question, and Mr. Schantz is um, the first to respond. It's a challenge to develop and implement a sound fiscal budget, and it is important to include citizens in the process. Were you in favor of the town spending the investment fund principal from the sale of the electric plant? Why or why not? What are your ideas about how to work with citizens to develop a budget that meets the current and future needs of the town? Mr. Schantz? Um, well, I'm sorry that we had to vote on it in the first place. Let me just say that. But yes, I did, I did vote for it. And um, you know, the only reason why is like I was just sick of waiting. We're already this far into it. Spend the money. Why, why devise another plan where we have to borrow and then the taxpayers have to pay more? It, just, it, all, it all comes back on us as taxpayers, regardless. So just spend the money, let's get it done, let's get back to normal lives, let's get the streets going the right way, let's get the holes filled in. For God's sake, let's just get it done. Um, as far as working you know, with the citizens, again, there, there's no good company that ever does not listen to the people who work for it, and, and the town has gotta be the same way. You get your, your your local business owners involved, you get the people who want to be involved. And that's the number one thing, right? All of you are here because you want to be involved. You want your voice to be heard. You want your vote to count. But you have to make it count more than just today. 
you have to make it count more than just election day. And it's on the town council to make sure that that happens. So if you want to be involved, be involved. Um, but on our end, getting a budget that works is always gonna be a challenge. But you also have to focus the budget on where do you wanna go? So if you wanna get citizens involved, what do you want? Tell us what you want and we can start you know, having the discussion about it. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what the citizen uh, interaction looks like. I've never sat in that chair. Um, I know George, you have more expertise on that and I'm not afraid to admit it. I've never sat in that chair, but what I do every day is manage budgets, manage people, manage business, and work hard. So I think if you take that skill set and you put a little passion behind it, you can get people to want to be involved. And that's all you can really ask for. So I want people to want to be involved. I want to work with the citizens to make it work. And I, I, I don't think that we really have anywhere to go but up from here. So let's make the best of it and try to dig out of this hole together. Thank you. Mr. Sigler. Thank you. I was not in favor of liquidating the investment fund. The fund had been in place for over 40 years. It had paid the town $2.5 million in interest over that 40 year period. That comes down to about $55,000 per year that's gone. And I don't know when we're gonna get it back or how we're gonna get it back. Most governments, and we are a government, we borrow funds to do projects, get bonds at a favorable rate, and do what we have to do and then pay the money back. That's what most governments do. We liquidate assets is never a good thing to do. And this one may come back and bite us in the butt. I hope it doesn't. I hope we're able to work through it. We've got to do better as we move forward. And that's one of the reasons I'm sitting here. Thank you very much. Okay, at this point, we um, move to our audience questions part of the program. Um, there's a couple of things I want to mention before we get started. Questioner should come up to the microphone, um, identify himself or herself before posing the question, and tell where he or she lives. The questioner has 45 seconds to pose the question and the candidates each have two minutes to respond. Please refrain from personal comments. Public exchanges such as this one work best if a high level of civility and decorum is observed. So please don't use this as an opportunity to address specific personal situations, but rather ask questions of more general interest to the public. Is there anyone with a question? Please come up to the microphone. And the, the, um, Mr. Schantz will go first in this question. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. My name is Roy Sherman. I live at 239. Is it on now? That's what I'm looking for. Mike, help. <laughs> okay, Roy Sherman. Now there we go. 213 Hope Road. Um, for the last several years, I've been on a member of the uh, Economic Development Commission for the county. And in those years, I've only seen a representative from Centerville attend a meeting once. There's a, the focus of the EDC at this point in time is north of Queenstown, simply because of the overpopulation in the southern end. So Centerville's in there, and Centerville can, can gain a lot from joining some of those meetings and uh, finding out what's going on. Maybe we're, we're looking at a lot of different things. If elected, would you be willing to participate in that and possibly gain some business out of it? Mr. Herman, thank you very much for your question. I, I absolutely would be willing to do it. Matter of fact, um, part of our equipment grant came from the EDC to build my new store here in Centerville. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely versed with what you guys do. I appreciate it very much. And you, you are part of the reason why I've been able to move forward with my own business. 
So absolutely, I would love to be involved in any way, any way we can help you out, for sure. Good. We look forward to it. Thanks. Whichever one of you get elected. Thank you. Mr. Siegler, would you like to respond? Whatever it takes, Royce, to make it work and move this town forward. I've done that in the past, and I will continue to do that in the future. Thank you. Is there another question? <laughs> I'm going to ask a question first. Um, I address my question to both of you. Could you identify yourself, please, and where you live? I'm Carolyn Armstrong. I live in Centerville Heights. I've been here for a long time. Would either of you consider appointing a small citizens committee or group to look at the town as we see it and to make suggestions for its improvement? You have a tremendous amount of assets here. On low, you're not using them. You have an art gallery, which is never open. You have buildings, which are historic and beautiful, but they're not up to code. Uh, Mr. Schantz, you have a business. You had to do a lot of renovation, I'm sure, in that building. Indeed. You have a lot of things to be done that are small. No. And I think maybe you better look at towns on a, on a small level, like Berlin or other towns of that size like ours and see what is making them successful. But I don't think we're using what we have. Um, Mr. Siegler? For those of you who served on my finance committee, would you please raise your hands? My first year on the council through opposition from people who are no longer here, objected to me forming a finance committee to look at our finances and figure out a way that we could better do what we had to do to move the town forward. The committee stayed there as long as I was on the council. They are not there now. If I am elected, when I'm elected, that will be the first thing that will come back as well as any other, any other ad hoc committee that the citizens want to serve on, with the initial thing being to serve on. We can do it together, but it's got to be together. And I think we can, and I hope we can. Thank you. Ms. Armstrong, I, I, uh, I completely agree with you, and I think I touched on it earlier during some of the, the formal questions, is that it's very important for, for us to get the citizens involved. Um, small business committees, um, citizen committees, whatever, whatever type of committee that you want to form, as I said earlier, it's, you're electing a team leader. So as you hold us responsible, we also need to hold the citizens responsible to show up and do their part because we can't change things by ourselves. So any sort of committee where people want to take action absolutely needs to be at the forefront. That's where the thinking comes from, that's where the think tank comes from, that's where the ideas start to flow, and that's how action happens, right, is, is getting those people together. Um, and to sit back and just hope that it's gonna happen is, is never never the plan to move forward. So, um, but I think you're absolutely right. Um, I, I've said it a couple times tonight, you know, existing assets are, are something that we have plenty of. And it just needs that kickstart. So who's gonna kickstart it? You know, I, I need this job like I need another hole in my head. I got a lot of stuff going on, right? But busy people make things happen. And busy people, time expands and contracts due to your needs. And what we need right now is people like you that want to be active and want to make a change. And if you want me to be the, uh, the flag holder, so to speak, for that change, I'm more than happy to do that for you. Thank you. Are there any more questions from the audience? Don Galloway, Jr., uh, Centerbrook, uh, Meadowbrook area, uh, Northbrook. I'm at a disadvantage. I know both of you gentlemen. Um, I'm from Edgewater originally, Edgewater, Maryland, on the other side of the bridge. I came to Centerville because when I grew up, Centerville reminded me so much like Edgewater was growing up. Nice laid back country. People here are friendly. They joke and say, Andy Griffin, oh well. I enjoy it. I'm thankful and blessed I'm here. How can you assure me that by build, building bigger business in here, because now Edgewater has all this business there, but they didn't plan 
parking, um, proving the roads or anything, and once you cross over that South River Bridge, it's all gridlock. And I do not want Centerville to become like Edgewater. And the question is for both of you. Mr. Schantz? So I, I think the main thing that I think George and I can agree on is it's not necessarily about building bigger business here. It's about building back up the, the existing business that we have. Right, so you look, you drive downtown and you see buildings in disrepair, you see empty buildings, you see for rent signs, uh, you see just all of this beautification that could happen. And I think that's, that's really the main focus now. It, it, from where I stand, it's not let's build a Walmart, it's let's get these buildings filled, right? So let's preserve and market as a historic town. Let's keep it a, a historic town, but we still have to fill the voids to be able to, to market it at all. Right. So, you know, buildings coming to code was mentioned earlier. Um, you know, like I said, you drive around, you see for rent signs, for sale signs, you see paint falling off. That, that's the kind of stuff we need to address to be able to fill small business, not build big business. And again, that's another infrastructure question. Right. So you go back to we're not ready for another infrastructure project. We don't have the money. We don't have the credit. We're not in that position. But what we can do is fill the spots that we have. Right. So that, that's, I think that's the main focus as far as I'm concerned. Mr. Siegler. Thanks. When we moved here in 92, we called this Mayberry of the North. Literally, the downtown closed at 5. In a lot of instances today, the downtown still closes at 5. Got a couple shops open here, a couple shops open there. But people are coming to Centerville to shop. And hopefully they will continue to come once we start to work out the best kind of growth moving forward. We have a great group of folks on the planning and zoning who are all professionals in what they do, how we look at these things. The economic development plan plans that out. We're getting ready for a comprehensive plan to come out again for the next 10 years is going to co cover all the growth. And we've got to make sure that that growth is tailored to both the quaintness of our community as well as the growth of the community. Uh, we just need to work smarter. And I think we're capable of doing that as a group. Okay? Thank you both. Mm -hmm. Any further? Yes. Hello. I'm Jack. I'm uh, from Northbrook. Jack. Jack Alton. Yeah, from Northbrook. Famous. <laughs> I was just, um, so we, we, learn, we know a lot about you guys, like what you're saying you're going to do in office if you get elected and things that you've done in the past, um, but kind of want to know people like on the field and off the field as well. So, you know, other than being two of the best looking ball guys in, in Centerville, what are some of the things that you guys have done um, in the past two years since you've been out of office and the past two years since you've been here for the community, um, you know, just being basic citizens, basically. Sure. So that's my question. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Siegler. I'm a cook. He's a cook. He does it for a living. I do it for fun. If any of you have ever been to the county fair over the last 10 years and you ate dinners on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday night, you ate my food. We do that every year. A group of about 30 people volunteer their time and it's a lot of time, trust me. And we raise an average of thirty to forty thousand dollars a year for the 4-H park. I also work with a bunch of crazy guys down at the Catholic Church on Route 50. I did one of those yesterday. We go down and cook ribs and pit beef and barbecue and chicken, all those things that everybody on the Eastern Shore likes. They have been doing that there since the 40s when people would pull up to the wall of the church, the one, the church down there, it's got all the wall around it, and people would hand cooked chicken across the fence as a way of raising funny. Well, that's never really stopped, and we're doing it again to help redo the facade on the church. I do the same thing with Mother of Sorrows and Boy Scouts, Veterans Affairs, to do volunteer. I'm one of those guys who pays it back. I always have. I pay it forward. And in, I'm 73, and I continue to do that, and I will continue to do that because I work out five days a week. Thank you very much. I do not work out five days a week. <laughs> However, I do cook. Um, 
So I think, Jack, what you were asking is what have you done in the community for the last couple of years, right? So opened two restaurants, created 40 jobs, started my business here with one food truck three years ago on Banjo Lane. We just opened our fourth store three years later, opening the steakhouse in November. Um, working with the high school to start a culinary club for free for kids to learn a trade. If you can cook or fix something for less than 40 bucks an hour, you got a job anywhere in the world. That's a fact. Um, everybody's got to eat. Everything breaks. So um, I host a Back the Badge tournament every year. Um, we give back as, as, as much as anybody else in the county, I think, as far as business owners go. Uh, this year we had 100-person golf tournaments, our fourth year doing it. Um, I think the total before expenses was like 17000 this year, um, which has grown exponentially. It doubled this year. We held it at Hognet Golf Course. Um, I, I think that my reputation here in town and in the county as, as a whole is someone who will give you the shirt off their back. Um, I've, I've done any and everything that I could to help anywhere that I can, and I will continue to do that. I'll continue to, to raise money. I'll continue to create jobs. I'll continue to expand business, and I will continue to fight for whatever it is that I believe in and try to get this ship righted. So um, when you ask what I've done for the last two or three years, it's hopefully work more and work smarter, work harder, and create as much opportunity as I can for other people. Thanks for your question, Jack. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Good evening, gentlemen. Thank Good you evening. for both uh, going to become town council members. Uh, <clears throat> Could you identify yourself, please? Yeah, okay, yes. Oh, sorry. My name is Robert Hardy. I live in Symphony Village. Uh, my question is, uh, Smokey, you talked about Economic Development Council. Uh, to the best of my memory, uh, it's been a revolving door, both in the county and the town, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to make plans that have never been implemented. What would you do, Smokey, excuse me, Mr. Sigler okay. and Mr. Schantz, what would you do to implement and get these economic plans? You talk about a historic uh, base that we could build on. Uh, Banjo Lane could be an entertainment district. We could hold fairs. Now that we have both ends of it, we could block it off. I mean, there's so many ideas. So I'm asking you, what would you do to uh, expedite getting uh, economic development? Oh, and on top of that, we have business development behind Food Lion that just sits there. Um, Mr. Schantz? Bob, thanks for your question. Um, so as far as economic development goes and business development goes, um, I'm pretty busy doing my part for that privately right now, building, you know, building new business in town and, and creating jobs, doing it that way. But I agree with you 100%. I, I don't see any reason why we can't do more events, Drink Maryland, things like that. There's a lot of things that don't cost money. There's a lot of times we, we have a beautiful downtown square that I would love to see a downtown bazaar. I'll call a couple of my food truck buddies. We'll bring the food trucks out. They don't cost anything. They're self-sufficient. You know, let's have some food. There's plenty of local musicians. We have a lot of people that have a lot to offer here. I see somebody sitting right here in the third row that owns a, a nice little ice cream truck. I'm sure he'd like to make some money with it. I know I'd like to make some money. I don't see any reason why. It, it's not about money. It's about gravity. Again, it's about involvement, right? So, you know, I was talking to somebody the other, oh, you know, I was talking, uh, I was at, at Western Auto talking to Jeff, and I said, you know, you guys got these guys selling Christmas trees every year. I said, do you think they'd donate a couple of trees for downtown? Maybe at the square this year, we have like a Christmas tree decorating contest, something like that, community events, whatever it is, you know, whatever the idea is. But I believe you're absolutely right. We can block off streets. We can't, we do it for Drink Maryland. We do it for other events. There's no reason why there can't be more interaction. And interaction is what breeds action, right? That's part of the word. So um, that's what I do for a living, by the way, is that kind of stuff. I do 170 events a year. Um, I'm all about that kind of stuff. So 
and not only that, I'm all about the ideas for new things and people wanting to be involved. Because like I said, you can't do it without it. Goodwill Fire Department, I'm sure, would be more than willing to be involved. We've talked to them in the past. Banjo Lane, as you, as you, as you mentioned, the town square. And that all goes back to that, that branding, uh, being that historic, beautiful town that, that promotes that Mayberry, down-home, family-oriented kind of deal. Mr. Siegler. Thanks, Bob, for bringing that up. I agree with you. We keep spinning our wheels and not moving forward. There's just a piece of property that just came on, on the market, the, uh, uh, the Locust Hill Farm, which is backed up to Banjo Lane. And right now, the zoning is fairly dense out there. I'd love to see another plus 55 community come in there on that piece of property. And I agree with you, we could take Banjo Lane and move all of those businesses to, to walking businesses, pave the street where Cal Gray's business is all the way out to the railroad tracks to make that a loop that goes all the way out to railroad and circles back down. Walkable business, nice cobblestone streets in there. All we have to do is get people involved. And that's always been the problem here in the past. We all like to talk a good game, but when it comes to put skins in the game, we gotta step up. And it can't just be the council. Okay, it's got to be the citizens as well. You've got to get into the groups. You've got to submit, got to start a better business bureau to make those things happen as we move forward. I will guarantee you, I will support each and every one of those endeavors when I'm on the council. I did it before and I will continue to do that, but we need your help. It can't be just one group. It's got to be everybody. Thank you very much. Yes. I've lived here in town since 1971 in the same house out in Centerville Heights. What do you gentlemen think of the proposed increase to five members for the town council? And why do you feel that way? Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Way before I was on the council the first time, we formed an ad hoc group. A couple of those people were sitting in this room about trying to get the council to move from three to five. I testified before the council back then, I don't know what year that was, Dan, 98 something. And they told me what they told the Centerville Alive. Go get the votes and make it happen. We couldn't get the votes. It happened this time because we didn't have the social media aspect of being able to reach out to everybody all at once to get them to show up and vote and do that. If you hear a little enthusiasm in my voice, I clapped loudly when I heard that this moved forward because it needs to move forward. We need to have five council members for a couple other reasons as well. So we can put five sets of eyes on everything we do when we move forward to make sure that the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted, everything that happens. And by doing those kind of things, we will move this town forward and make it a viable, warm, welcome place for people to live, work, and play. Thank you. Mr. Schantz. I agree with George. Council 5 is the only, the only way that I would ever vote um, as, as far as going from 3 to 5. Five heads are better than three. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the obvious, you know, common sense look at it. Um, but right now, when you look at only three people making the decisions on the council, and then you look at county commissioners, you look at other towns, you look at places like Easton. Berlin was mentioned earlier. Um, why aren't we following their pattern? You know, there's five for a reason. There's there's you eliminate the lack of self-interest. I think there's not enough nays when there's yays when there should be um there's more checks and balances when you get five people involved um you know uh, the the optics are not good right now they're just not and the only way to change that is to get more people involved on all levels right but if you can go to the highest level in our town which is the town council and you can say okay well let's put a couple more people up there and let's get a few more ideas going let's let's not just keep repeating the same pattern with the same people you know we have we have a member that's that's been ten years. We have members that have been, you know, six years. I'm 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 for term limits as well, 
You know, I think that the ideas have to continue to flow. And you can't do that in an ever-changing world if you have the same people making the same decisions for 15 years. That's not how it works. Whether it's local government or the Senate floor, times change. I would rather have a 50-year-old man who's worked four jobs and has experience doing a bunch of things than a 50-year-old man who has seven doctorates and never left the library. It's, 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 you, have to, you have to change with the times. Um, so yeah, I am for a council of five, absolutely. Okay. Oh, yes. Legacy Foundation. I, my greatest concern about the downtown is the lack of retail, and there's a, an economic theory that applies to that, and it's called clustering. And the, the concept is that if you have a group of businesses that have common ground or they're like, they're much more likely to survive. Hence, our group of restaurants are not only surviving, but it looks like they'll have growth. We have no retail at all, and we have a negative history of running retail out. If one, on the clustering theory, if one retail store moves in and it doesn't have sister retails, it will die for sure. So how would you address that? Is there a grant program? Would you subsidize stores to come in? You attract one in, how do you get more? That's what we need downtown for. That cluster of stores would also attract alternative demographics, which we also need. How would you bring in clusters of retail into downtown, how would you attract them? Mr. Schantz. Good question. Clustering is, 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 is a good term. I, I, I referred to it earlier as gravity. Yeah. It's the same thing. Um, whether you're talking retail or restaurants or business in general, one's going to feed off the other, right? So that's why strip malls work, yeah. is because, you know, you have a bunch of options and you don't have to drive 10 miles to get, I can go to Peebles, I can go to Acme, I can go to whatever, and get all the same thing, it's a one-stop shop, right? So turning your town into a one-stop shop, um, but keeping it in the limits of what we would like the town to be, right? So that's, that's the balance you have, to, you have to make. Now, as far as how do you bring them in, it's a great question. Um, first, you have to make it easy, right? You gotta get out of the way. You have to give them incentives on coming into town. How do you do that? You know, you have to start from the bottom and say, okay, well, what's the process now and how do we make it better? So that I can give you a packet of information and I can sit down with you as someone that's going to be making decisions on your opening, whether it be a town manager, a council member, or an inspector and say, okay, we're going to have a meeting, make sure you have all your ducks in a row and then we're going to move forward. Then you're going to go to the next step and make sure that all your boxes are checked so you don't have any surprises, right? Because that's what puts you behind. And all of a sudden you're two, three months behind and you're spending money and then you don't have enough to complete the project and you're out of here. I've seen it happen in this town more than once. Um, almost happened to me, you know? I don't want that to happen to anybody else. So to, to answer the question is you have to make it easy. And then you find the ones that are successful, like I touched on earlier. And they're like employees. If you got a great employee, I bet you they hang out with people that would be great employees too, you know? So you have to work off of, again, existing assets. And that's how you're gonna find the right way to go. And then it's up to you to, to be able to put in the work and, and, and have the meetings and have you know the pathways cleared and be able to help them find appropriate buildings, get the landlords involved. It, it's, it's, it's all a community effort in any way that you look at it. Mr. Siegler. Thank you. I've been here a while and I've watched us go from a sleepy little town by bumps and road and stops and goes I guess it was when we got our first two grocery stores in Centerville. Where Mama Mia's is, that was a little four checkout counter Acme that we all suffered through for a lot of years. And then Food Line came to town, the strip mall out there. And then we got another bigger and larger Acme came to town. So we had two grocery stores, you know, competition breeds, breeds good things for everybody. And because of that, they clustered there, okay? Again, I want to go back to my comments on the Banjo Lane area. It is ripe to do just that right there. We just have to figure out a comprehensive way of working with planning and zoning to make that happen in that part of the town because that's where our growth is going to be. Uh, it's not going to go north on 213. It may go south on 213 some, but it's going to go in that direction. And I think that's how we need to approach that. We just need the folks to get off their butts on their feet and try to help it move forward. 
and I'm certainly willing to be the leader of that band. Thank you very much. Yes. I live at 109 South Liberty Street, and I own Johnson's Game Vault in town. Um, my question's um, not an unknown one, um, but interesting in who is in the room tonight. Um, on Facebook, you all probably remember a question being posed in the candidate's form about the future of the courthouse, the cornerstone of our town, our county, and, and such a, an important historic building. Um, there are a couple commissioners in the room, I noticed, and so I'm just curious if you were elected and you were invited by our county commissioners to have a conversation about the future of that building, how would you imagine that conversation going? And since they're in the room tonight, I thought that would be an interesting question. Thank you. Mr. Siegler. I already had that conversation with the commissioners. What are you going to do? Uh, I don't see any of them. Oh. Our District 2 County Commissioner is here. The one thing that the commissioner that I spoke to came back to me and says about a mill four to bring it back to where it needs to be, and we don't know where the money's coming from. I agree with you. I remember seeing pictures of the 60s when they would string lights across the courthouse square and build a wooden dance floor out there and do dancing under the stars. I would love to see that happen again. I would love for us to be able to light up the downtown like a lot of other downtowns do. And it doesn't cost much, a little electricity there, and I'm gonna to touch on electricity here in a little bit. Close, we can close Lawyers Road and, and Broadway anytime we want to. They belong to us. And we can turn that into whatever we wanna turn it into. I spent a lot of time in Charlotte, North Carolina a sleepy little southern town until they passed liquor by the drink and then it turned into a very big unsleepy town. They did a thing called a live after five on Fridays to keep people downtown because at the end of the day everybody left the downtown. Kind of like at the end of the day here are 5,000 extra people that come to Centerville. Most of them leave Centerville and go home. We can do that kind of stuff. It just takes people to want to do it, to want to get involved. And it, as I said in my opening remarks, we're changing the diametrics of this town. Young people are here. You're in the room right now. And there's some of us old folks who still kind of like to do that kind of stuff as well and certainly would be amenable to help us move that forward. We just got to find the bucks and the time and the people. Thank you. Mr. Schantz. Eric, you bring up a really interesting question just based on, you know, the fact of what, what this town is. It's a historic, beautiful old town, right? So you're in like the oldest part of Maryland. This is where, you know, the first, <laughs> they got signs all the way across Ken Island, you know, first landing, all this kind of stuff, right? So I, I wasn't at that meeting, obviously, for the $1.4 million to redo the courthouse. I, I don't know how, how much it would actually cost. I don't know that you actually have to redo it. Um, I, I don't know that the building's going to fall down where it stands, but I do think it can be used. So you got this big, beautiful new courthouse, right? Everybody's going to move over there, and you have this old historic building um, that is really kind of the symbol of the town, right? So you drive through this beautiful, it's got a nice courtyard on the front, we've got statues, we've got the whole thing, and just kind of like, yeah, that's great. And you just kind of drive by, right? Because it's just another building. So it goes back to the branding aspect, which helps any company, any town, any person, whatever it is, if you're trying to promote yourself, you have to have a brand, right? We're historic, that is our brand. It's been proven, we've had studies done in town that says, how do you help the town? We spent money on it, thousands of dollars on studies for the town. You're historic, so be historic. I actually agree, I would love to see Dancing Under the Stars or whatever it was, I, I think it's great. I, I think that you have an opportunity, and like, like George said, you can shut it down whenever you want. After five o'clock, it is a ghost town. It's not being used. It doesn't cost much for LED lighting, like he said. I mean, it's, it's, I agree with him. I, I, I think that, that it, it's your biggest branding piece. I think it's, it's the biggest meeting place that we have. I think it's the, the cornerstone of the, of, of the town when you drive through, and right now it's being ignored. So 
How about we stop ignoring it and, and use it? Any more questions? Oh, you'll be next. Okay. No, 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 you go ahead. And then you're next. Hello, gentlemen. Um, first of all, thank you both for being here, and thank you both for caring enough to run for council. Um, my name's Nikki Pino. My husband Bob and I have owned a business in Centerville for 17 years, and we're still in business thanks to the people, the residents, the support we have in the community, and no thanks whatsoever to the town. I would would prefer giving some thanks and gratitude to the town, but when we opened, um, it took seven years for anybody from the town and the town council to even come in to acknowledge we were there. It was like, okay, yeah, this is, this is great. What can we do to help? So we started a block party. We had a block party going for 10 years. Oh, seven years, seven years. Um, we expanded our business and we couldn't do it anymore. And so we tried to hand it over to the town. And that year it rained and then it's never been spoke about again. Bob and I put a lot of our time and efforts and stuff in the town, and I know other people would. Um, however, you know, reestablishing trust is gonna be a huge ordeal right now. My question actually pertains to none of this. It pertains to what you both feel about the current acquisitions or the acquisitions of the properties in town being the wharf and the Liberty Building, and what you feel about the town being landlords. Do you support this or are you against this? Thank you very much. Mr. Schantz. The town, we're not landlords, as far as I'm concerned. I, I don't understand why, because, well, I wasn't there in the room to make the decisions, so I can't, can't tell you why, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna assume that I know why. Um, we have a huge financial hole we need to dig out of. So obviously if we're buying up properties, if we're, we're leasing property, whatever we're doing as, as far as the landlord stuff goes, like I said, I'm not going to go out of my box here and act like I know what I'm talking about on every property that the town owns because I don't. Um, but it seems to me that logic would dictate that if we're in financial hardship, call it whatever you want, we need to rebuild some equity, we need to look at what the town owns and figure out how we can make it work in our favor, right? Are we selling it? Are we renting it? Who are we renting it to? Are we using it to bring more business into town? Are we, are we allocating, again, our existing assets that we have to make the town better? Or are we using it for, for personal gain or whatever else, right? So I can't give you 100% on, on why, but I can tell you that you know, I, I, I'm not sure why the town would be a landlord um, or why that would be necessary unless we're renting out to uh, our own businesses, you know, our own uh, town offices, things like that. So, um, again, I don't want to overstep my bounds and talk about something that I, I really don't have a, a thousand percent yes for you. But um, all we can do is look into it and, and see the best way to move forward and, and make sure that it's in the benefit of the town, not the detriment of the town. Mr. Siegler. I was on my first year in office when the vote came up, and it was unanimous, three votes, yes, to buy the wharf property for several reasons. We were leasing space. Let me just back up a minute. How many people in here have been in the town office? Small space, right? Crowded in there, not a lot of room. They used to hold the town council meetings in Mr. Walls' office back in the day when we were sitting here. The wharf bil building came on the market, the town bought it. We bought it so that we didn't have to pay 10,000 years, $10,000 plus every year to lease space for our finance department and our zoning departments. We also bought it to be a building, inc a, a business incubator to get some business to come to town so that the people would come to town and maybe spend their money in the town. There are two biz, three businesses down there, right, four down there right now. Plus, we have a conference room, a real conference room now, and that's where our finance department is. We also have a fishing tackle business down there that has been there since the building's been open. We have Big B Sports 
in the other half of the big building along with a fitness training program. Can you imagine a kid seven years old comes into that building, has a baseball player wearing a, a World Series ring teaching him how to play baseball in our town. And then when that family leaves there, there's a real good chance they're gonna stop somewhere in town and grab something to eat or go shopping or do something else. We were able to get a grant to redo the bathrooms in that town so that it becomes part of the wharf recreation area, which is ongoing and it's in our town plan to have that whole area keep growing the way it is right now. And that was one of the reasons I voted for it. Thank you. You have a question now? My name is Joe Brown, I live in Assembly Village. Uh, blessing the gentleman tonight has made several comments about working with the business community. Um, I am a member of the Center of Economic Development Authority. We've tried to have events um, and get the business community out, and it hasn't been real successful in getting folks to come out. Um, I've talked to business owners in town and I get the feeling that there's not a good relationship between those businesses and the town council and the town employees. So I would like to know what you would do to improve that relationship. Thank you. Mr. Siegler. I'm sitting here tonight because of that, because I care. I want to see us grow. And I spend an inordinate amount of my time meeting with people both on the town level, in the community, walking up and down the streets, asking questions, getting answers, and I would certainly make that a priority when I'm elected to the council. Thank you. Mr. Schantz. So Joe, to be a little bit more specific to your, to your question, I agree with you. I think that the relationship between the town and the business owners is pretty much non-existent. Um, I know because I'm one of them. Um, part of me wanting to be here is to be a bridge, to bridge that gap, to start repairing those relationships because when you have someone that's on both sides of the fence, it's hard for them to be partisan. So it's important to understand that when people get involved, you know, what are the reasons they want to get involved? So I want to get involved because I want to affect change for the fact that I don't want the same thing to happen to me to happen to someone else. I don't want to have to go through the same hoops. I don't want to have to jump through the same. It's the relationship is extremely strained. And to be honest with you, it also affects the relationships between the other business owners. Not all of them, but some of them, people just get fed up. You're all human beings. You're only going to put up with stuff for so long. So if you don't have that bridge to bridge the gap, it's just going to keep happening and keep happening and you're just going to go farther and farther apart. So part of the reason I'm doing this or that I want to do this is because I can be that bridge. I'm on both sides and I completely, I completely agree with you hundred percent. Any more questions? Yes. In the back. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. My name is Ryan Holgrieve. Uh, I live on 501 Chesterfield Avenue. Uh, we've talked a lot about business development and economic growth tonight, uh, but one of my concerns living close to the wharf uh, is what your ideas were uh, for future development in green areas in Centerville, like the Millstream Park, Millstream Trail, and the wharf areas, and if there are any ideas you guys have for developing these areas in the future. Thank you. Mr. Shunks. So as far as development goes, I actually, can, can you come back up for one second? Can you be a little bit more specific on what you mean for, for development as far as, are we talking bringing more people to it? Or are you talking building? Are you talking, can you just be a little bit more specific with your question? Absolutely. Uh, so I know that I have, I have two sisters personally at my house, uh, and they love going to the wharf, uh, but they can't go past 6 o'clock when the sun goes down because sure. there aren't lights out there. So we're talking infrastructure, you know, sidewalks, things like that, uh, to just kind of improve the relation. Uh, with these green areas and make them a little bit more friendly, community friendly after hours and such. Got it. So I, I would like to see that my sisters could be able to go out a little darker. Got it. Great question. Thank you. So young people stepping up to the microphone. When's the last time you saw that? <laughs> Ever. So 
As you can see, and, and George touched on it earlier, the demographics changing, right? More people want to be involved, which is great. Um, safety for young kids is, is, is huge. We have, an, we have a heroin problem here, <laughs> a drug problem here. There's a lot of, it's, it's, it's on signs in front of the, this building right here. It can't be ignored. So safety is, is a huge issue. And I think that the questions like you just posed are exactly why community members need to be involved with the town council in some sort of committee form. And how old are you, sir? 16. 16. So you go to Queen Anne's? Yeah. Okay. So I would, I would ask you, would you be willing to put together a committee of high school kids that want to be involved in something like this? Do you have other people that want to be involved and pose questions like this? It's important for you guys to be involved. Just because you're 16 doesn't mean you don't get a voice. You stood up at the microphone just like everybody else. You get to be taken seriously too. So if you have real issues like that, that's exactly why the town needs to be more transparent, needs to be more involved, and has to take people seriously to be able to affect change like that. So as far as the infrastructure goes, I can't speak to it yet. I don't hold the seat. But what I can tell you is you matter. Everything you just said is important. And don't ever let anybody tell you that you don't matter just because you're 16. That was a very well put together question. Thank you. Mr. Siegler. Well done. Glad to see you here. We've done some things on the parks. We finally, after all these years, uh, one of the former council mem members sitting in the audience who will remain unnamed, his biggest wish was to get the trail paved while he was on the council. It didn't happen, but it did finally happen. And it's made a world of difference down there. I understand that the police department is now going to re bring back their new bike, their bike patrol, patrol those areas down there on, on the total trail moving all the way forward. The trail system in the comprehensive plan, if anybody wants to read through that thing, it's about that big, shows where those trails will continue to go all the way around through um, Northbrook and back out the road to Symphony Village and back to the park area. It's in the book. It's just we got to work on the book harder and faster to get there. And I think we can. And, you know, we need all the voices. You know, people are just normal. If, but if you come up to the, to, the, to the front of the room and you say, what are you going to do about this? How are we going to do that? Then good on you and get involved. And you are. And we will get this done for infrastructure. Okay. We have time for one more question. Back in the room. Um, let me get in the back of the room, young lady. We saw you back there. Hi. Yes. <laughs> my kids have been quiet, so I better get my question in. Well. <coughs> Excuse me while I can. I'm Lucy Marks. I live on Chesterfield Avenue. And tonight we've been hearing a lot about um, strengthening the existing businesses and filling the vacant stores and cleaning them all up. <clears throat> One way I think we can do it is by inviting our communities that are right outside of town, making it more friendly for them to come in town, mainly by a sidewalk extending up to Northbrook. I don't live there, but I know hundreds of people live there. And if this is not a town project per se is this something that you guys would think about um, pursuing or pressuring the county to do we have a new YMCA <clears throat> excuse me coming up and there are no sidewalks beyond the high school so the possibility of extending sidewalks to the middle school that would allow walking and use of the YMCA and just sort of improve foot traffic and business um, throughout the town if we welcome those communities that are right outside our downtown borders. Thanks. Mr. Siegler. It's in that big plan that's been, been there for as long as I was on the council. It's just slowly moving forward because it all comes down to dollars. Where are we going to find the money? How are we going to do it? But I, I, I look at it. Have, I looked at it this week. And that sidewalk is there to come out to Northbrook and circle all the way around. And it's on the comprehensive plan. It's just getting us off the dime now to move it forward. And how are we going to do that? And it all comes down to the dollars. Where do we find the money? Okay. 
I'd do it tomorrow if we had the money. Mr. Schultz. Right. You know, it, it, making access, especially for, for younger kids that don't have cars, things like that. Uh, there's a lot of people that are active in town, especially in Northbrook. A lot of runners, a lot of stuff like that. Just gives them another reason, another path to go. Um, if we weren't $4 million over budget on a road project, we'd probably have a couple more dollars in the bank. We could start talking about more infrastructure. Um, so like George says, cost money. Is it a great idea? Does it need to happen? Absolutely. But you got to pay for it. So unfortunately, until we dig out of a hole or find some other form of funds, um, I'm not sure how to, how to give you a great answer on that. But you're right, it does need to happen. Well, if there's somebody with a really hot question, we can maybe sneak in one more. OK. All right. But this is really the last one, and then we're going to wrap up with It'll some. Be quick because we yes, no. Right. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. John Leo Walter, I own a business in town, Real Town. Um, can you pledge tonight that if elected, you will pass a resolution for term limits to the town council members? Yes. Absolutely. I don't know if I can pass it personally, but I'll vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> No, no more answers, okay? You're finished? All right, well, thank you so much. Um, so now we're moving to our candidates' closing statements. And um, gentlemen, you have two minutes each, and Mr. Schantz, you will go first. Well, as, uh, as I started this whole evening out, I don't have a fancy speech or any of that stuff written down. Um, thank you guys for coming out, especially thank you to that young gentleman back there. This is the kind of stuff that we need. You got to have involvement. Um, I'm going to continue to do what I do, work really hard, keep creating jobs, speaking my mind, standing up for what's right, all that kind of good stuff. Um, I was warned before coming in here by a couple of people, it's like, got to tone it down, watch your mouth. I got the same speech. <laughs> You've heard a lot of similarities up here tonight, you know, on a couple of issues. Um, I, I think that, uh, that, that everyone wants to do the right thing, but it's who's going to actually stand up and do it. Um, I've got really broad shoulders. I don't mind carrying a load. So Centerville has given me everything that I have since I moved here. I started my food truck with 500 bucks in my pocket, and three years later, we've been able to build a multi-unit business and just sold our first franchise out of state, all because of the people sitting in this room. You guys are the reason why I built my flagship store here. You're the reason why I have a business. You're the reason why I have a life here at all. And um, I just want to say thank you to everybody for coming out. Um, you always get an answer from me. It might not be the one you want, but at least it's going to be honest. And um, you're not going to have to wait for it. So thank you guys again for coming out. and appreciate it. Mr. Siegler. I'm glad I have two of the county commissioners here. What I'm holding up is our real property tax bill. My first year on the council, I beat up on a guy by the name of David Dunmire to do the right thing when it came to tax differentials. We put it together. He finally championed it. We are getting a tax differential, but we're not getting the full amount of the tax differential. Right now, we're about 11.4 cents. We should be somewhere between 16 and 17 cents from the county. For, and everybody understands what a tax differential is? It's a, okay, everybody's nodding yes. Is there anybody out there who doesn't know what a tax differential is? What it means is we get doubly taxed. We get town taxes and county taxes for the same services. That's basically what tax differential is. We started this on my first year. We're there part of the way. I would like and make you a promise that I'm going to work really hard to get you the rest of the funds over the next three years. And that's one of the things I'm going to work hard on. So thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Both candidates have said they would remain if you wanted to speak with them and um, would be happy to just come on up and introduce yourselves. Thank you very much.